At Granger, we're for the ones who pay attention to every little detail, the ones who fuss, tinker, and sweat the small stuff. Because you know the tiniest thing can make the biggest difference when it comes to keeping business moving. We get it. We're the same way. Offering access to product experts to help you quickly and easily find what you need. So whatever your industry, you know you're always getting professional-grade products. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me Through the wilderness and woods To where the winds are blowing free Through the darkness of the night Welcome to the Jester Section Hiker Podcast with the spotlight on Section Hikers. And I'll spread the word and you beat the drum. We'll round up the troops and get the gang to come. And we'll leave the streets and these neighborhoods. Head over the river. I am excited to announce that the podcast episodes that are specific to the Mountains to Sea Trail are now being sponsored by the MST Guide by Pocket Trails. The MST Guide is the most comprehensive app for maps and navigation developed for the Mountains to Sea Trail, providing unprecedented information and ease of access for day hikers, section hikers, and through hikers. Never get lost again updated maps with trail route changes and everything you need from parking areas, camping locations, water sources, and more. Available now for download through Google Play and coming soon for the iPhone. Check it out and download today. The MST Guide by Pocket Trails. Follow the lines in the palm of your hand. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. You are listening to Jester Section Hiker, the premier podcast with the spotlight on section hikers. And I'm your host, Julie Jester Gayhart. And with this episode, we are going to go ahead and get right to it. I am actually already out on the Mountains of Sea Trail this morning, working on the 40-day hikes from the book, great day hikes on North Carolina's Mountains to Sea Trail. And it is already an awesome sunny morning. I am on hike number 32 and it is really early. And one of the things I wanna try to do for this episode is see how many of these hikes I can get done today and take you along with me. So let's get right to it. I am on hike. Number 32, titled Stones Creek Game Land. It goes from North Carolina, North Carolina 210 to US 17. The distance is 3.5 miles one way. The degree of difficulty is moderate, and the trail type is all natural trail surface. The elevation gain We'll stop here is a whopping 85 feet. The elevation loss is 85 feet. The highlights for this hike is the trail goes through Longleaf Pine, Savannah, and Lake Views. And here is a little bit of the description from the book. Stones Creek Game Land is a little known enclave nestled into Camp Lejeune Marine, Marine Corps Base. Over the years, much of what is now the game land was converted to pine plantation, some of which have been heavily timbered. Under the management of North Carolina Wildlife Refuge Commission, efforts are underway to restore the native longleaf pine savannas that historically grew here. Much of the land through which this hike passes has been planted in young longleaf pine and gradually hikers will be able to watch it transform into a mature, highly diverse habitat. Even now, the area hosts a diverse abundance of wildlife and plants, including several endangered species. So you guys, (laughs) this hike already has surprised me, but let me start off with, uh, last night stayed in the Top Cell 
beach area at I think it's the Hampton Inn and Suites and I only had a four minute drive this morning to get here to the start of this hike so that was awesome but a little bit of a story to tell you about last night so of course you know after the drive here from Charlotte it was about a four hour drive from where I live and I wanted my chicken sandwich so found a place it's called Rick's bar and restaurant really close to the hotel and as soon as I pulled into the parking lot there lo and behold was one of those awesome marquee signs for the mountains of sea trail uh, that I'm learning are in various places along the MST as you are hiking I had no idea that the trail was actually on the road there but anyway that was so cool to pull into the parking lot get out take some pictures of that signage uh, of course got my grilled chicken sandwich and then drove down to the beach and took a look at everything down at Topsail Beach got a little bit of a sunset last night but anyway went back to the hotel wanted to get rested up because I've given myself a little bit of a challenge today but we'll see how it works out I'm trying to get five of these hikes done and I will take you guys along with me so I've read the description from the book. Ooh, it's a little wet here. Um, and I am actually on the hike. I am probably two miles into this hike. And you start off from the parking area. And for some reason, this hike has you going west on the Mountains of Sea Trail. So you start off west and you are on a hard packed, sandy, gravelly road. And I will say, after about, I don't know, even a quarter of a mile, you get away from the road, and all of a sudden it feels like you are all by yourself in this vast, open game lands. And as the description says, you can tell there are vast open areas, but you can see where the pines are growing. And it just feels like you can see forever and it's great and the footing is a little bit different it's pretty sandy once you make that turn there is a left hand turn at the 1.4 mile mark it is marked very well that's what I another thing I wanted to say this particular portion has been marked very well so you don't have to worry about that so far and when you have to make that left hand turn like it describes in the book there are actually two directional marker post indicating that turn and now I am off the gravel road and onto some trail it's a little soggy but no big deal and it kind of puts you back into that woodsy feel so I am really enjoying this like I said you guys <laughs> before I have gotten really really lucky with the weather being out on these hikes even though some of these hikes are pretty chilly, but with the sun out beaming down on you, you warm up pretty quickly. So I am going to enjoy the rest of this hike. I think I have about a mile to go. And then on to hike number 33. And we'll see how many of these we can get done today. And I will be back to chat with you guys. Oh, wow, you guys. I don't know if you can hear that on my mic, but this is also part of Camp Lejeune's training area and I don't know what kind of military plane is going over me right now but really cool anyway guys I'm going to finish out hike number 32 and I will be back to chat with you guys when I get to hike number 33 all right you guys I am back currently on hike number 33 but before we get to that I wanted to give you a couple notes. The first one is regarding hike number 32 that I failed to mention uh, here in the first part about that hike. Please make sure, depending on what time of year you hike in that game lands area, in the book it recommends that you have orange on because during a particular time, I want to say between September and April or January and April 
it is hunting season and they do allow hunting on those game lands. So 100% double check that information. Make sure you have your orange on. I do have my orange safety handkerchief on the front of me. And then I added a bright orange pair of gloves. I pinned to the back of my pack for that particular hike. And pretty much I'm on hike number 33 and I still have it on. So you can never be too safe. Although for hike number 33, I don't think you need to worry about it, but it's on my pack. So for these hikes today that I'm trying to get done, I'm just gonna keep it all on. And the second thing is, I don't think I've mentioned this yet on the podcast, but I am actually beta testing the iPhone version of the MST guide. And if you guys will remember, I had Josh Smith on a few episodes back and he talked about the creation of the MST guide for the Mountains of Sea Trail. And right now it is only available for purchase if you have an Android phone, but he is working hard to get the iPhone version going. And so far on these last few hikes, I have been beta testing the iPhone and it seems to be working out great. I am giving him some feedback and he and I are talking. So hopefully soon, the iPhone version of this app will be available. And when it is, I will definitely let you know on the podcast, but let's go ahead and get into hike number 33, which is the Lejeune Memorial Greenway from Montford Point Road to Holcomb Boulevard. And the distance on this hike is very unique. You can basically do as much as you want. In the book, it says as desired, up to 9.6 miles round trip. The degree of difficulty is easy to moderate, and I would say pretty easy. Uh, The trail type, you are on all greenway. The elevation gain is 100 feet. The loss is 89 feet, and I imagine that would depend on how far you go out and when you turn around. The highlights, and you guys, when I say these highlights, they are very, very true. Military Memorial Gardens, Rails to Trails Greenway, and Water Views, and here's a little description from the book. Jacksonville, North Carolina, the site of this hike, is home to one of the nation's largest concentrations of military personnel at Camp Lejeune Marine Corps Base. The route which runs along the edge of the base is a fitting and moving tribute to our nation's servicemen and women. There is no parking, uh, excuse me, there is no parking available beyond the Western Trailhead. So the hike must be done as an out and back walk. This book provides directions for 4.8 miles of hiking one way, but hikers can turn around at any point to make the walk as long or as short as they like. And I will tell you guys, for me, I pretty much went out 20 minutes because I wanted to give myself over a mile and I am on my return trip. And the highlights for me so far for this hike um, have been at the beginning, the Memorial Gardens, there's a tribute. (laughs) There are two or three tributes to various things and I am looking forward to getting back to that. And as you begin your hike on the Greenway, you kind of walk past the various memorial gardens and tributes, and then you actually get on the Greenway itself. Uh, There are a couple, I think there's two or three tunnels that you go under, because you kind of go under, I believe it's Highway 17 and 24. And then when you get on the military property, which I am on right now. I gotta hand it to them. Another amazing, very well kept, pristine boardwalk, which I am walking on right now, making my way back. So with this hike, I will say, the very beginning of the hike is probably the highlight. And as soon as you get to the parking area, you guys will see that for yourself. I wanted to spend some time there in the beginning, so I spent a little bit of time kind of walking around the memorials, 
taken a few pictures and then wanted to get the hike complete. So again, walked out about 20 minutes, which I knew that would give me over a mile. And I am working my way back so I can spend some time at those memorials. I have never uh, been this far east in North Carolina. And this Camp Lejeune area is amazing. Um, I've heard really good things about this area. I uh, have a couple friends that live out this way and they said you're going to be surprised when you get here and I am. So you guys, I am working my way back on this long boardwalk and when you get out to this hike you will see, I mean it was some work to put this boardwalk in and thank goodness because underneath is just marsh and muck and on my return trip on the left hand side it's very evident that is military property it is all fenced and they do have signage up that says please stay on the trail and you definitely don't want to go off the trail because you just be walking in marshy waters so with that being said i am working my way back to the beginning and the parking area of this hike and i'm going to spend as much time as i can at these memorials and reading the signage and learning about the history of the area and what is happening so i will be back and chat with you guys when i get to hike number where am i at 32 33 hike number 34. all right chat soon guys all right you guys back at it coming to you from hike number 34 on the mountains of sea trail and i wanted to let you guys know i could not remember all the names of the memorials that are at the beginning of hike number 33 so i put them down here there is a vietnam memorial a beirut memorial um, there's a steel beam there it's really cool from the world trade center um, that happened during 9 11. there is the montford point marine memorial and a memorial to African-American soldiers. So just a reminder, either at the beginning of hike number 33 or at the end of hike number 33, take your time. Um, you're not gonna be able to help yourself. And some of those memorials are really cool. So like I said, I am out here on hike number 34, which is the Northern Nusioc Trail, which goes from North Carolina 101 to Bill Finger Road. The distance is 3.3 miles one way. The degree of difficulty is rated moderate. The trail type is natural surface trail. And so far, you guys, it is all on trail, single track trail. It has been really nice. And the elevation gain is a whopping 14 feet. The loss is a 14 feet. The highlights are diverse coastal plain forest swamps and wildlife and i will say i don't even know where to begin with this forest it is absolutely beautiful i am not familiar with the coastal plains plant life at all but i will say it kind of gives you that feeling of being back in the green tunnel um, for those i imagine for those that are through hiking this trail it gives you that mountain feel again being back on single track trail but the book description says the Nusioc Trail and I hope I'm saying that right um, the Nusioc Trail at 21 miles the longest continuous hiking trail in eastern North Carolina runs concurrently with the Mountains of Sea Trail for its entire length the Nusioc which will mark its 50th birthday oh that's really cool its 50th birthday in 2021 was built and is maintained by the Carteret County Wildlife Club with help from the U.S. Forest Service. And I will say 100% this trail is very maintained. There are um, little bog bridges or mini boardwalks right when you need them. I'm getting ready to go over one right now because this trail is, I guess what I would call very boggy and i will say prepare to have your feet wet depending on the season if it's just rained or something like that um, my feet are soaked but that's okay i got dry socks in the car but i want to continue on with what the book says here 
it says the entire Nusiak Trail is within the Croatian National Forest, the only national forest on North Carolina's coastal plain. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, this hike follows one of the most diverse stretches of the Nusiak. Hikers will encounter several types of pine forest, mostly loblolly and longleaf pine savanna, as well as hardwood swamps with deep bogs. Boardwalks and bridges take hikers, take hikers over the many of the boggiest area, but this forest is a wet place. Among the animals making this forest home are black bear, alligator, bald eagles, songbirds, like the, okay, I'm gonna get this all wrong, like the Prothonotari warbler, endangered red uh, woodpeckers, and several species of poisonous snakes. Okay, that's not really what I need to be reading right now, alligators and poisonous snakes, but hey, um, <laughs> we will roll with it. The trail also passes the remains of some old tar kilns, now just mounds in the woods, from the days when this area had a thriving naval store industry. So there is the total description from the book for hike number 34. I'm glad I didn't read that about the uh, alligators and poisonous snakes now that I'm in the uh, midst of this national forest. But anyway, I will try not to think about that. Um, <laughs> so with all of that being said, you guys, this is a great little hike. I mean, all of these, I call them, here I am again, calling them skinny little pine trees and the forest you are on. I am almost, I would say, about two miles into this hike. It has been on single track trail the entire time from the trailhead back at the start there at North Carolina 101, I believe. And I will say that trailhead had room for about five or six cars. So pretty decent sized trailhead and I am getting ready to go through you guys will probably hear here some muck anyway what I call muck but um just wet feet here so be prepared on this one bring an extra pair of socks or two depending on how many days you're going to be out here and I will say I meant to tell you guys in the beginning um, of this commentary for hike number 34, you have about an hour drive in between hike number 33 and number 34. So there are plenty of places to fuel up on gas, grab something to eat, um, and get ready for hike number 34 before you get over here. And I am on <laughs> another one of these amazing boardwalks or bog bridges, I guess, and just read the sign that it was created by a local Boy Scout troop. So thank you for that. Thank you for those that maintain this section of the trail for the Mountains of Sea Trail. You can tell where they've been in here clearing the route and making sure there is a great footpath. And I will leave you guys with this. I hope I don't see any of those alligators or snakes that they're talking about, but I will keep you posted. <laughs> I'm going to finish up this awesome, peaceful hike on the New Seahawk Trail, and I will be back to chat with you guys real soon on hike number 35. All right, you guys, I am back. Coming to you from, sorry, I lost my breath there, <laughs> coming to you from hike number 35, which is titled the Southern Nusiak Trail. It is considered the Oyster Point Loop. And let me go ahead and tell you about this hike. The distance is 2.8 miles. The degree of difficulty is easy. And I will agree with that. The trail type is natural surface trail, gravel road, and paved road. The total elevation gain is another whopping 81 feet. The loss is 81 feet. And the highlights are estuary views, birds, freshwater swamps, and coastal ecosystem. And this is some of the book description of the hike. 
I must be on the 81 feet of up, I'm out of breath. <laughs> This loop hike includes the southern end of the Nusiak Trail, the longest continuous hiking trail in eastern North Carolina. Along the coastal pine forest and freshwater swamps, the hike offers expansive views of salt marsh and tidal creeks. As with hike number 34, it is entirely within the Croatian National Forest. It begins and ends at the U.S. Forest Service's Oyster Point Campground, the southern terminus of the Nusiak Trail. The book describes the hike as a clockwise route, allowing the hiker to get the road walking out of the way at the beginning and the end and save the end for the best views. So you guys, uh, <laughs> that is very true. So when you put in the coordinate to get to trailhead number one for this hike, hike number 35, you're going to come down about a mile, I think the book says 0.9, gravel road <laughs> and this one's got a little bit of a trick to it because i did read about this hike but i did not put two and two together until i got to the trailhead area where the campground is so you come down the gravel road and i will say you guys it is toward the end of february 2021 right now and i know we've had a lot of rain the road is rutted out um not too, too bad, but there are a couple spots that were pretty deep. You got to be careful to go around. So was feeling good about getting through those ruts and then started reading the description of the hike and realized I had to hike right on back down that same road <laughs> and uh, out to the main road there, take a right and then actually get on the mountains of sea trail and start looping back from there. So. That was a little bit of a trick, Jim Grody. So for those of you that have not done this hike yet, uh, please take a look at the description. And you do have to drive down the road, park at the campground area, and the campground looks really nice. So that would make for a good end point, maybe spend the night and then uh, do this hike the next day or vice versa. So, and the campground is open year round, but so getting to this hike, you hike right back up the road that you came from or drove down. You hook a right on the main road and then there are signs um, about the Nusiak Trail. You hook a right and I am on that section now. And this portion of the trail right away, I will say, is a lot drier than the uh, hike number 34 por portion of the Nusiak Trail. It does give you that same feeling. You are, <laughs> I described it earlier as, you kind of feel like um, with the vegetation on your right and your left, you are in the green tunnel. But it also reminds me of being in a cornfield, like running through cornfields like I did as a kid, because the vegetation is just high enough that you can't see over so you feel enclosed in so i will say that is the feeling that you get on hike number 34 and also on this hike number 35. Um, yeah so once you get off the road and you loop back in on your left hand side is a gorgeous gorgeous marsh area and i was thinking about those alligators <laughs> that I read about earlier and I'm like, well, they're all over there. So I'm staying as far over here as I can. And uh, it just reminds me of maybe hiking in a boggy, swampy area. And I think because it is toward the latter end of February and thank goodness there are, I'm not having any issues with bugs, but I could imagine in the deep, deep heat of the summer, that this would be a pretty buggy area. So I'm really happy with the time of year that I um, am working on these hikes. So ironically enough, I am back on the road, uh, taking that left-hand turn, and then I'm gonna turn left, back onto the Mountains of Sea Trail off of 181, and then I'm on the final loop back to the campground. So you guys, this hike, is very very similar to hike number 34 
with the exception of that tricky little road um, you got to walk back down at the beginning of the hike and do check out the campground oyster point campground depending on what time of year you're going to be camping there are campsites there available it looked really nice so you guys i am going to finish out hike number 35 and it is currently two o'clock so i think i'm going to be able to meet my goal it is a 30 minute drive to hike number 36 so i think i'm going to make that happen and i was watching the uh sunset last night and it got dark about 5 45 so i think i'm going to be able to make it but i will definitely keep you guys posted and i will be back to chat once i get on hike number 36. all right you guys i am back i officially made it to hike number 36 woohoo so that <laughs> hopefully if i finish is going to meet my goal for the day of completing hikes number 32 33 34 35 and now officially to the outer banks of north carolina on hike number 36 titled down east north carolina the town of williston to the town of davis the distance is 3.9 miles one way the degree of difficulty is easy and i will say that we are on all paved road the trail type is all paved road and the elegant elevation gain and loss are both six feet <laughs> the highlights are tidal creek crossings marsh views and rural communities and the description for this hike in the book reads as follows i'm actually on a road here so i'm going to get over so i can stop and read this so this hike highlights two of the small towns in the coastal ecosystems that exemplify the area that residents traditionally call down east. Fishing, particularly for shrimp and blue crabs, is a mainstay of the economy here, and it is not uncommon to see crab pots or shrimp nets along the side of the road. So you guys, <laughs> this hike starts at, I believe, the United Methodist Church. I literally just left there maybe like a mile or a mile and a half ago and you are walking on the coastal byway down on I-70 east toward the fire department in Daviston. And I don't know, you guys, I am really, really excited and pumped up about being on hike number 36. I made it. The last time I chatted with you, it was right at two o'clock. I started this hike a little after three and 3.9 miles down the road and you guys four hikes away from finishing these 40 day hikes i am i don't know why i'm so pumped up but i'm really pumped up i guess i'm trying to pump myself up for being on the road and it's not that bad in the book it describes it as not heavily traveled and i would say that and it, there's plenty of room on the side of the road here um, to actually not be on the road if a car is coming and you can get off to the side. So I am really pumped up. It's really neat to be on this road on the coastal byway. I have never been this far in North Carolina on the east coast of North Carolina after living here uh, over 20 years. So it's exciting. I'm really happy I'm getting ready to complete these five hikes in one day. Started really early this morning. Every time I got done with a hike, got back in the car, ate in the car, went to the next hike. I had it in my mind this morning that I wanted to do this and I'm doing it. So there you go, guys. As you can hear, I am walking on the road, started at the church on the North Carolina 
coastal highway on the Outer Banks. And if all goes well, the very next episode right after this one, you guys will hear that I am going to finish these hikes. So I am really excited. I just can't, I don't know, all of a sudden just like a whole bunch of excitement came over me. <laughs> and uh, I kind of want to end on this note. The last Mountains to Sea Trail episode I had was titled Hope on the Mountains to Sea Trail. And over the last five months, in these COVID times, through the fall of 2020 and the start of 2021, working on these 40 hikes, getting out on this trail, becoming part of the Mountains to Sea Trail community, as you heard last time, has really given me hope. And I will say, I will probably call this episode Peace on the Mountains to Sea Trail because besides this road walk, these five hikes have been extremely peaceful. So last episode was hope on the MST and I will end with this episode as peace on the Mountains to Sea Trail. And you guys, I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today, getting these five hikes done. I'm headed to the fire department in Davidson or Daviston. And when I get there, I think I'm heading to Cedar Island tonight to the campground. Four more hikes to go. All right, guys, until next Saturday, thanks for listening, everybody, and happy section hiking. Woohoo! I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me Through the wilderness and woods To where the winds are blowing free Through the darkness of the night Heading toward the morning light I wonder if you'd wander with me And I'll spread the word And you beat the drum We'll round up the truth and get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets And these neighborhoods Head over the river And through the woods You're wondering if I go Wandering with you What kind of trouble We'll get ourselves into would it be wrong to tag along with a band of vagabonds? You wonder if I'd wander with you. So I'll spread the word and you beat the drum. We'll round up the troops and get the gang to come. And we'll leave the streets and these neighborhoods head over the river. I'm wondering if you'd come wandering my way If you ever get lost or if the trail leads you astray The music of the pack can always bring you back I wonder, can we wander away? And I'll spread the word and you beat the drum Round up the truth Get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets In these neighborhoods Head over the river And through the woods Why don't more infant formula companies Use organic, grass-fed whole milk Instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies Use the latest breast milk science? 
Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart, an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super superfood on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins actually found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S. made formula to use organic grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We even conducted the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in a quarter century with clinically proven benefits like easier digestion, less spit up and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. And we make our own formula in the USA and our very own factories in Iowa, Oregon and Pennsylvania. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com.